Welcome to the Breakthrough Experience. I'm Juanita Washington. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're focusing on being refreshed and renewed. And let's face it, after the year we've had of so much trauma, it's time that we take a look at us. Across our country, communities of color have significantly been impacted by social injustices, abuse of power, and the fight to be seen, heard, and valued. It seems every week we're looking at a new hashtag and acts of violence against peers and against those of authority. As a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, and an aunt, it's troubling to say the least. So what can we do? Jazzy T sits down with Reverend Myra Brown, the woman who was known as the human barricade for protesters in Rochester, New York. In the midst of the pandemic in 2020, when the world had no choice but to be still, our country was forced to face social injustices head on, which was sparked by the death of George Floyd, an African-American man who was murdered when a Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chauvin, kneeled on his neck, suffocating him to death. Protests and demonstrations broke out across the country. But in Rochester, the fight against injustice took a personal turn after the death of Daniel Prude, an African-American man who died shortly after being held down by Rochester police officers. Prude's death immediately made national headlines as local protesters took to the streets of Rochester. As local protesters took to the streets and City Hall night after night for weeks, demanding answers, but was often met by officers and pepper sprayed and handcuffed until the faithful day Reverend Myra Brown was called to the scene. Yeah, so in this moment, um, the protesters were um, protesting at City Hall and um, the police arrived. There were um, some protesters who were sitting in, on the steps blocking one door out of three doors that actually employees could go through. Right. Um, and then the police were called, the right police showed up, and they began to ask them to disperse, mm -hmm. um, which I believe was their constitutional right to protest. Yeah. Um, and so um, those who refused, there were 12 arrested um, and taken away, and then they started to chase the other protesters and try to arrest more. Um, and at that point, I actually happened to be at the church uh, around the corner at the time and my phone started going off. So I had movement leaders calling me saying, Reverend Meyer, are you there? They're arresting protesters. And then I also had the police chief calling me, um, apparently wanting you know, to see if I could somehow dis diffuse right. what, was, what was going on there. Reverend Brown says she didn't know what she was going to do in that moment, but she knew she had to get there quickly. But I got over there and it was very clear to me um, that this was a moment of justice. It wasn't a moment of negotiating for the police. <laughs> and so um, I asked the movement leader, uh, Ashley Gant, who was, one, who was left, right. what she wanted to do. And she told me how they had arrested people. Um, you know, and I, as I listened, um, it just became clear, I, you know, for all of a sudden, I just said to her, you know, how can I help? Mm -hmm. Would it help if I got arrested? And she seemed shocked. She's like, what, Reverend Myra? <laughs> and I said, you know, if they're threatening to arrest you, then they'll have to arrest me too. And so I said, I'm going to go up and offer myself to be arrested. Reverend Brown says she approached the officers and offered herself up to be arrested and serve as a human barricade. She was able to peacefully negotiate on behalf of the protesters. You know, he said, you know, couldn't you just get them over onto the parking lot on the side? And I said, I could, but aren't those public sidewalks? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And I said, well, then I think they have a constitutional right to protest on the sidewalks. He says, yes, but we need to, they're blocking the streets the sidewalk, the stairs, right. and the employees can't get in. I said, well, I think we could fix that too. They're no longer blocking the, the steps and employees can now get in. Days and weeks following that day, Reverend Brown continued to serve as a peacemaker and called for elders across the city to join in and serve as a bridge between protesters and officers. But now, several months later, Reverend Brown says the real work to bring unity still needs to be done. True unity right, prioritizes justice, which means you have to um, talk about um, and lead on making sure that there are 
um, appropriate consequences for people and systems that do harm mm -hmm. and appropriate redress to the people that are being harmed. And so, you know, part of what happens in Rochester, and I think cities across the country, mm -hmm. is um, that's the hardest work. And it's the work that um, is the least um, chosen. All right. And if we don't uh, center accountability, we actually don't get change, right? We don't get change. And um, if we're not going for change, we're literally wasting our time and we're wasting the time of the people. Reverend Brown says it's going to take all of us because doing nothing is also upholding injustice. Like the power of silence upholds the system of racism and white supremacy. Mm. Jazzy T, Breakthrough TV. What an amazing story of inspiration and courage. Reverend Myra Brown, thank you so much for all of your years of service throughout our community. The stress of the pandemic and social injustices has done a number on us all, which is why it's important for us to take care of our self-care plan. Raina Brooks joins us now with what we can do to refresh and renew for the spring and the summer. As we begin to see the ease of more restrictions, both men and women are preparing to head back outside. Everybody want to get their body right. So we have a new service that we're introducing here called Wood Therapy by my esthetician, Denatia. So it falls in the line with like the body contouring, the non-invasive light bulb. Raina Brooks, the owner of the mobile spa, says she's beginning to see more clients scheduling appointments for a number of different services. And it's because of her preparation during the COVID shutdown that she's been able to grow her business by adding new staff, creating jobs, and offering new services. So the number one thing in the summertime, girls love getting Brazilian waxes. But the one thing that I do now is laser hair removal. So before with Brazilians, it's not permanent it's just temporary you come in every four to six weeks but with the laser it's more permanent reduction so versus like if you come in for a wax you need it every four to six weeks but after six sessions which is done in four week intervals with laser you won't see any more hair maybe in a year a little something might come through but you just get it waxed or you get it removed by the laser again and it's done Brooks recently celebrated eight years of being in business. She admits it hasn't been easy, but credits God and having patience as her keys to expanding her business. I just want to say just take your time in anything. Like, I could have went off and got like a whole staff in year four, but it just wasn't my time. You have to allow yourself to develop in your own craft so that you can be able to lead other people. If I would have started off too early, I wouldn't have been a good leader because I still would have been focused on myself. Now, with her new staff and additional services, Brooks says she can meet the growing demands of her clients as self-care becomes more and more popular. And she has some tips to help us all get ready for the spring and summer. Just getting your body right, getting your skin right, drinking your water, eating the right foods, coming in maybe for a body treatment, a full body exfoliation is excellent, especially in the summertime because you want to get off that dry skin from the winter weather. So it's just so much that you can do. If you're looking to indulge in a little self-care this spring or summer, there are multiple ways you can reach the team at the mobile spa. Okay, so you can find me, number one, on Instagram at the Mobile Spa ROC. You can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash the Mobile Spa ROC. You can log on to our website, www.themobilesparoc.com. And you can also give us a call at 585-563-7187. Now that we know what to do to get our bodies together, Let's figure out what to put in the closet for this spring and summer. Coming up next, Sharon Jones joins us with this week's fashion fix on how to get spring and summer ready right after this message. In search of your next career move, consider Jordan Health. What makes Jordan so unique is it's you can really learn here. It's like family here. It's like family, like basically. Yeah, I love it. I love that Jordan. <laughs> So I decided to come to Jordan because this was a place that I came to when I was a kid and my family chose to come here when we first came to America. So as a way to give back to those that are newly arriving in the community at large, I've decided to join here and be employed at Jordan. What are you waiting for? 
do it. This is an opportunity for you to give back as well as for you to get. You know, I often say, you know, I think I get more out of it than what I actually give. So stop waiting, go ahead and do it. Don't wait a second longer. Take a look at our open positions and apply today at jordanhealth.org because we are Jordan. We are Jordan. We are Jordan. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Experience. Ladies, what should we wear for this spring and summer? Sharon Jones joins us with this week's fashion fix on what's trendy this season. Hi, this is Sharon Jones with your fashion fix of today. We're gonna get into spring has sprung. Top 10 looks to be on the lookout for. A good trench coat. Colorful ones are really trending. So ladies, make sure you have a trench coat in your arsenal this spring summer okay because it's really big and the bigger the color the brighter the color the better and another thing that you need to be on the lookout for is button down oversized is key so anything button down whether it's a dress or a shirt is really really big this spring summer colorful button downs white button downs and i'm talking about not your regular button down that you can tuck into your blouse tuck into your pants or tuck it into your skirt but i'm talking about the ones that you wear with your jeans or you just wear them alone you wrap a belt around it those are really big for spring as well coats with loads of color and when i mean coats i'm talking about your blazers pea coat blazers they are popping they are all zara has a plethora of colors for you to choose from throw on that blazer put on your solid colors and you're on trend and you're ready to go Athletic wear is very big as well for spring, summer. Ladies, get into your biker shorts, your track suits, your track jackets. Biker shorts are really big and you can throw on a, cut, a crop top, your biker shorts, and a blazer if you don't feel comfortable just wearing a crop top and the biker shorts. Throw on a blazer, throw on your little heels, and you're ready for dinner. You're ready for a day out with your ladies and your girlfriends. The other thing that's really popping for spring, summer is cinching the waist, making and creating a waist. Everyone has a waistline. I don't care if you're a plus size girl or a petite girl. Everyone has a waistline, and belts are really big for spring, summer. So invest in your belts, and don't shy away from the big belts, and don't shy away from the small, skinny belts. They are incredible they will do amazing things you can take a belt and pull in your blazer wrap the belt on top of the blazer and create a whole different look so there's a plethora of ways to wear a belt this spring summer khaki cool khakis and khakis are coming in different colors this year this season they're coming in like yellows and baby blues powder pinks all kind of colors soft colors so don't shy away from your khaki pants and don't always go for the tan ones reach out, do the ones that are like ankle length and the ones that even come past the ankle. You can roll them up, you can do so many things with your khaki, so just look out for that. Tie-dye is very big. If you don't know, and we're not talking about your 60s tie-dye, we're talking about more of a, a melochromatic, um, more neutral, natural, chic flow to your tie-dyes. And you're gonna see tie-dyes in your skirts, you're gonna see them in your dresses, you're gonna see them in your t-shirts. You're just gonna see tie-dye everywhere this spring and summer and they come in a plethora of colors. So don't shy away from tie-dye. Bold shoulders. Now this is the thing for me about the bold shoulders. Everybody can't wear bold shoulders because if you are thick in your shoulder, I wouldn't recommend you wear a bold shoulder. But if you're not and you're confident with it, hey, rock it. Bold shoulders are very big this spring, summer, and you can catch those in Zara's, ASOS, Macy's, wherever. Bold shoulders are very big and trending for spring, summer. Anything netted, and that's in shoes, that's in dresses, that's in your purses, that's in your um, wardrobe, your skirts, your your anything netted is official for spring, summer. Some of them are very chic, some are very trendy, some are very urban. Anything netted is big for spring, summer. Also, ladies, all of the colors I have loaded up, and you will see these colors, you'll see these colors in all of the stores, ranging from Target to your Macy's to your Saks to your Nordstrom's. These colors are on trend. Don't be afraid to uh, wear them. And for the ladies that are afraid of color, I recommend that you just put some color up around your neck, whether that be a necklace 
or a bandana. Don't shy away from the colors because they're not going anywhere for spring, summer. If you like what you heard or seen, feel free to follow me on Fashion Forward Edition Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's Breakthrough Experience. I'm your host, Juanita Washington. Next week, we're talking about post-COVID. Does that even really exist? But what does life really look like for us more than a year into a pandemic? Do we keep our same routines or have we had any lessons learned? That's coming up next week. For the latest, follow us on BreakthroughMag.com. We just want to motivate you. Just trying to elevate you. And you, we do believe. Oh, it's Breakthrough Magazine. The time is now, we've got to show you all. We want to open and empower y'all. The time is now, we got to show you all. We want to open and empower